Hello friends, my name is Christopher and in this video I'm talking about roof underlay, drip edge, and shingles. Remember to hug and thank your roofer the next time you hire one. This is video number seven in a nine part series, deep dives into specific topics on this shed I just built. If you want to watch, I've got a feature length video of this entire thing, great interesting shots, and a four minute time lapse for something fun. Anyways, let's dive right in. I'll take you inside, move my lawnmower, <clears throat> because I have a little bit of underlay still left. This was a long researched topic by me, many different forums on Reddit and elsewhere, talking about what did I want to do for the roof. Now for code in my city, I had to, for a shed this size, I was only required to do 15 pound felt underlay. So I thought, okay, 15 pound, great. In fact, I went and I got one. I ended up returning it because that night I did more research and I thought, well, I should, should I just have spent a little extra money and done 30 pound for extra protection? Mm, maybe so. And then I stumbled onto ice and water barriers and I'm in Wisconsin. And if you don't know, Wisconsin has a lot of ice and snow and I need a barrier for that. So, um, since usually an ice and water barrier is like, what, two rows thick or so, I thought I'm gonna be doing two rows, maybe two and a half for this entire shed. Why not do my entire roof out of ice and water barrier? And that's what I did. So I have a synthetic underlay. This stuff is fantastic. It costs a little bit more, don't you know, because it's a more important and impressive material. Um, a couple things. This synthetic underlay has an adhesive bottom. It's you know, it's a tar adhesive. And if you're doing this in 95 degree weather in blazing sun, it gets really hot. So I went through the process of rolling these out, cutting them in, you know, 12 feet, four inch sections, just so I had a little bit of overhang that I could cut off nice and flush. The process itself is pretty straightforward. You cut those off, you put it on the roof. Um, I was tacking them in every couple of feet till I got to the middle, then I ripped off the adhesive and I unrolled it, stuck it down, and I just had to put a roofing nail, a cap roofing nail, every, I think, foot. Um, I overdid it and I went nice and close because again, you don't see the underlay, it gets covered by shingles and I, I had the stuff and I just wanted it to be nice and tight. So I would go and do one half, then come back and peel off the stickies, do the other half and nail it down. Do that and then you just repeat until you cover the roof. So I covered each of these by, oh, six inches. Hey, there's that number again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I reference it in like three other parts of this prior to it. Six inches is a great number for overlap. So the second one overlapped by six inches and the third one overlapped by six inches. And for me, the third one actually went on the peak and it was an overlap on this side and an overlap on that side. And it was the most difficult part of this entire shed build. So thanks to both my wife and my buddy Sean for stabilizing the ladder when I was up on that step that the ladders say, this is not a step. We all use it, right? Anyway, the underlay gets up and you feel like you've really accomplished something. Fun thing to keep in mind during this entire process, if it's going to rain, remember to keep your shed tarped. I did, I'm very happy about that because I had dry material as per regulations on the packaging of my underlay and my shingles and everything else and what people say to do online. So make sure you're tarping it and keeping your stuff dry, which is easier said than done because this is a 10 over 12 roof. It's really tall and a one man job throwing a great big, like what, 12 by 16 tarp over this. is really difficult to do. And of course I was doing it in July and we get a lot of those summer storms, you know, Whatever, rant over, drip edge. This here is a drip edge, don't you know? Mine is aluminum. There are a ton of different kinds out there of uh, plastic and metal and the like, and they are so easy. Check your code um, and the recommendations on the materials of your underlay or your drip edge that you get for where to put it. I think the code that I had to follow was you put the uh, the drip edge down first, the underlay on top of it, and then on the sides, the drip edge on top of the underlay. Again, check what your state or city requires. This is real easy. I'm just using roofing nails to pound it down every foot. And an important thing to remember, don't put the drip edge right along the fascia. God, is there conflicting information out there on YouTube videos and on websites. 
I opted to go with the people that explained keeping this away from the fascia is important by at least a finger length because with a driving rein, water is just going to shoot down. Great, no problem. But with a soft rein, and as the rein stops, it comes down and surface tension pulls the water in. And you want to have space here for the water to be pulled in and then drip down and not get sucked right onto the fascia, which will then get sucked onto your siding, which will reduce the lifetime of your fascia and your siding. Okay? Makes sense. So you put the drip edge up along the entire way. And then we do shingles. And before I pan out, I just want you to know, finger length for the drip edge here and about a half inch overlay of my shingles to the drip edge for the same reason of the water surface tension. So my roof is hot, I know. And we waited forever for these shingles. Again, supply chain delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It's fine, we live in a post-scarcity society and sometimes there's scarcity. Anyways, I opted for uh, Owens Corning shingles and they were terrific. There was a nail line. It showed you exactly where the tar strip was so you had your perfect overlap of like six inches and some. Um, and it was really, really straightforward. Anytime you work with shingles, just follow the instructions on the back of the bag. Really, really easy. Um, these go up in sheets and I would start in one corner, but before I started the actual shingles, I needed a starter strip, which I just made from extra shingles, cutting them apart. As you can see in the footage, it's doing a better job explaining it than my voice. Put a strip across there and then start in one corner and you just work your way around, um, as you were seeing. It is straightforward, yes. Do you get tired? Absolutely. Did this take longer than I expected it would? <laughs> you bet it did. It took me about eight hours to do my roof. But a lot of that was me going up and down and up and down a ladder because the grade of the roof is so steep that I can't exactly stand on it. Um, have a friend, hold your ladder, it definitely helps. And when it was all said and done, I was extremely satisfied. <clears throat> now, I capped off the roof using dedicated roofing caps. You could, of course, just take one of your shingles and bend it over and do a series uh, like that to cover it up. I did dedicated roofing caps because I think it offered a nice contrast and I doubled them up because the packaging said if you want it to look extra fancy, double them up for even more protection. <laughs> okay, because what am I going to do with all these extra, you know, caps? Might as well use them. And I have to say, it turned out really nicely. If I were to do things again, this is what I would do differently. First off, I would get different lengths of drip edge. I don't know what I was thinking. In fact, I just, I don't think that I was properly considering the math in my head, because at this point I'm off of my iCreatables.com downloadable blueprints. Not a sponsor of this video, I just really like their stuff. Link in the description if you're searching for shed ideas. Anyways, I was off of those blueprints, and 12 inches wide, or 12 feet wide, don't you know? My sections of drip edge were 10 feet wide. So here it stops and I had to figure out, well, am I going to put this parallel? Am I going to put it on the side? Am I going to center it? What? I just had to figure that out. It would have been great to get 12 foot or so long material. It was fine. Uh, you know, I flashed it appropriately in this situation, but it would have been nicer just to have something of the right length. Item number two to do differently. I would have gotten the ice and water barrier from the start. I just didn't know it was a product available. so. You know, I've done a lot of research, and I would recommend mm, do your research, uh, read up, watch videos, and uh, make a careful plan. Fortunately, I live nearby my big box store, and I was able to go back and forth, and they give me store credit, and I can swap things out, and it was just fine, but that situation might not be the same for you, so it pays uh, to do your homework. And lastly, also do your math. Um, if the math isn't done, being done for you, since I don't have a blueprint at this point anymore, I got enough shingles, I think the minimum order I could have done is what I ordered, and I thought it covered 450 square foot. And my, re my roof is about 150 square feet. I used almost all of my shingles, so I don't know if that 450 square feet was if there's no overlap, or if I got shorted shingles, or what happened. But I got lucky, is honestly what happened. And I made my materials, uh, I used them very, efficiently and effectively, but that might have not been the case, and I might have been up 
a certain crick without a paddle. So, fortunately it turned out good in my favor, but do your math. So the shingles are up and it looks great. And the only thing left for me to do really was to install the doors and the windows, which is what we're talking about next in part eight. Uh, and I chose to do an antique exterior door and some really slick stained glass windows exterior grade. I'll tell you all about that next time. So if you watch this, let me know what I did right or what I could have done better that I didn't already talk about in the comments down below. The most of, you know helpful one I will pin to the top to help others be respectful. Thank you very much. If you're new, I hope you subscribe and like all that jazz. I put out some pretty decent content on gardening and home improvement. And I'll see you in part eight. Thanks a lot. Take care.